I love the idea of faces. I was always fascinated with uh, the expressions that you get on people. I studied them for quite a long time and uh, I slowly developed a new approach. And so now I'm ready to start faces exploring the emotional landscape. I wanted to show somebody who is very much uh, on fire with his ideas, very much convinced about his righteousness. And I used the graphic elements to actually focus away from the eyes and actually really focus on his mouth. This is his communication, this is his focus, this is where he excels. So the eyes, I wanted to make sure that they have the punch, the fire, but there's also a touch of kindness underneath it. What is it that is different about my approach? I'm trying to blend two separate approaches. The one is the abstraction and the other one is realism. I'm using abstractions to enhance realism or realism to enhance abstraction. And you know, I use a lot of white space, I use a lot of negative space. I like you to be able to roam with your eyes around that canvas and pick out different elements. And based on your own emotional format, I want you to be able to interpret what you see. I was born in 1945 and I grew up in Vienna, Austria. And of course, Vienna at that particular time was divided into four different sections, the British, the French, the Russians, and the American sector. We all know the history and we all know what uh, World War II was all about and the effects afterwards. That was certainly uh, an experience that shaped me and formed me for the rest of my life. My childhood was not atypical to millions of other children who grew up in Europe. We had to learn how to deal with an incredible emotional landscape. You process, you survive, you move on but you deal with it for the rest of your life. I would like to put it out there and let people know, know the children are part of your war. And no, it doesn't take intelligence to be hungry, to be frightened. And I hope I can make people aware that the promises that came out in the 50s, that we will have in the United Nations, that we will stop war, that we will solve all these problems, these promises have not come true. Darfur, Cambodia, Rwanda, these children, they suffered the same thing we did. Once again, we stood by and saw it happening. So if you bring this kind of world to your children, pre-prepared that that child will have to deal with it for a long time. I think after a long childhood and a long period of uncertainty, I grew up, decided that I needed to be somewhere in the arts. About the age of 15, 16, in Vienna was the Café Havica. I started to hang out there. You could sit there once in a while, be in the company of some great people. There were people like Fuchs, Leher, Blimd, and this was a great opportunity for me to kind of see uh, firsthand, begin to understand what it might mean to live the life of an artist. So I sit down, do the emotional part, I do the realism, because that's ultimately the template. 
And from that template, I will expand and build onto. From that stage on, all sorts of things can happen. Um, I'm always surprised about what my final uh, version of it is. There are about 30, 40 different drawings involved in that. As a graphic designer, I have learned to condense everything in the simplest and easiest strokes. And the combination of line work and realism, there you have some room. How do I interpret that? What are the additional layers to that? So blending those two techniques together, for me it is enormously fun. I always find it fascinating what you can accomplish with it and really make some significant statements. This painting is Suspicion, and for me, it is a bit of a break away from my previous uh, drawings. And I wanted to simply focus on the eyes, the mouth, the emotional landscape that these two things express and touch that concept of certain suspense. And other emotions are to follow, but they're not quite there yet. You can read into it. But when you squint your eyes and you look at that from a distance, you begin to see just the eye, and that's the important thing. Ultimately, adding these uh, edgy elements to it, giving a question that there is a lot of emotion underlying that particular uh, suspicion. That's what I love about line work. Uh, you know, two strokes like this uh, mean A. Uh, one stroke horizontal, one stroke vertical means an L. Well, these are all lines, basically. We all have imprints about what certain structures of lines mean. An alphabet is more or less a form of a logo, uh, and we attribute lo meaning to it. It has to represent a set of emotions that we all share, and so it's interpretive. Uh, the realism pretty much sets the tone, and what you see is what you get. I use Durban. It's uh, dry watercolors. Pigmentation is the same as a watercolor. Uh, except it's in pencil form. There are a few techniques uh, that I use. I use extremely sharp points and uh, I want to make sure that I can layer my colors over and over and over again. Uh, I use extremely uh, hard uh, museum grade board. What the eye can discern on a grayscale level and what it can see with color are two different things. So for me, trying to direct your eye in selecting what's important about this and how to read this picture. I give you three different visual levels. So I give you the grayscale and I give you the color level. And then also on top of it, as you will look into some of the paintings, I also give you silhouettes. In other words, I introduce color over there, but ever so slightly repeat it down here. And then I might give you a motion with that same color over here. So what happens is that you kind of have to resolve uh, some of these unfinished images in your own mind. Uh, basically, I'm trying to engage you. I'm trying to visually kind of read a little play here. I put you to work a little bit. So that is part of my intention. It's, it's a visual conversation with a, with the face.